I got into music because of my love for listening to music. I think it was my way of contributing to an art that I appreciated so much. And I never saw myself at any point as a musician. I never aspired to be one. I think it's just something that happened naturally because of my curiosity about the music I was listening to. I don't have one set way in terms of how I start a song. Sometimes I start with melody and sometimes I start with beats. Sometimes I start with samples. Sampling to me is repurposing a sound. I would say even my earliest version of sampling was when I was a child playing classical music. I didn't like playing entire pieces. I just played parts of them. And my family would make fun of me and be like, Jen, you can't play anything. It's not true. I only wanted to play the parts of the songs that I wanted to play. So I would say earlier in my career, I would sample off records. So I would go digging for records and I would sample breaks and then melodic samples. So cool horn, loops, things like that. And I would montage them into songs, right? And now I sample like field recordings, Foley sounds, um, the wind outside, airplanes in the sky, the ocean, things like that. And I repurpose those in the same ways that I used to repurpose record samples. So when you go out and you sample these unique nature sounds, no one else will have that sound. You know, someone hits the same rock as you, it's not gonna sound the same. The ocean is only gonna sound that way once. And whether it's a guy yelling on the street, he's only gonna yell that way once. You know, it's never gonna sound the same. And when you have that palette, no one can copy you. If you have a synthesizer, and I have the same synthesizer, yeah, we're gonna sound the same, we're gonna have the same sounds, but not if you go and record sounds that are just uniquely yours. Sampling is incredibly important to my production. It's still something I actively do. It is a source of inspiration for me because sometimes when you have a sound that you captured, when you have no ideas, that one sound can lead you to all these different avenues and opens all these doors when you felt like you were stuck. And that's really important for me. It's where I came from. I came from the sampling world. And even though I tend to play a lot of music myself, I think that the sampling component is always going to make my music stand out. For me, I have a sample dropped in here, but in order for me to know how I want to work with the sample, I'm going to just create a very basic rhythm first. Let's do something housey. I think that'll be really fun. And I'm going to just start by just putting in kick drums. Really simple. So I'm going to go down, find a good kick that I like. I should like, I like this one, it's heavy. So we'll start with that. Okay, so that'll help me figure out what I want to do with the sample. I'm going to put in a hi-hat. I'm going to work on the melody now. Sounds really nice. 
So I created this really nice little melody, super simple, and I'm gonna add some reverb to it. So we'll use the grid effects and just play with it a little bit. For me, I like the length to be longer, so I have more ideas to put down. So I'll go into the pattern settings and actually extend the pattern length. And then if I press up here, then it'll actually shorten it, make it much shorter. But I think uh, for the ideas that I'm going for, I find that I tend to do this the most, so I can have more ideas written down. I actually want my kick drum to hit harder, so I'm gonna go and tune it a little bit. I'm distorting it a little bit, but I like it. So what I like doing also when I'm playing on these type of groove boxes or any kind of like sequencer is muting things and just sequencing it on the lives. The circuit rhythm is really fun. I'm very familiar with hardware. It's something that I also used a lot more before. I had this thought when I didn't see a screen, I was like, that's very unusual to not have any kind of screen whatsoever. I mean, even like modulars, the smallest module you have will have a screen, but this didn't have any. And I realized it really plays into uh, the intuitiveness of building music. And you lose that when you're constantly making music on the computer. So it became really fun to just lose yourself in this creative process of making a beat, moving it around, making another one. And they're just short loops, you know, short ideas which then can turn into huge ideas once you port that into your computer and build it out. So it was pretty refreshing for me. There is something beautiful about how each sequencer is and drum machine in which it could mean that if you have like an 808 or something, it's always gonna sound a certain way. And that lends itself to techno and house or whatever, but you can't make very good swung beats maybe on one particular machine over another. Every time I make a song or a beat that I'm super hyped on, first thing that happens is I export it, it gets on my phone, I put on headphones, I listen to it outside, I listen to it in the car, I listen to it in my friend's car, whether or not they want to hear it or not. It's this heroic kind of achievement when you make that song, and it might be miles away from being done, but just even uh, a melody and a drum loop could just be like, this is gonna be amazing, this is gonna be a hit, everyone's gonna love this song just based off of that. When you make a song in the studio, at that point, you will never for sure know how people will respond. Maybe I play it and everyone's like, oh, this is okay. Songs that I like, just like any song, might not be a song that another person may like too. So now I'm gonna share it with people and they might not like it, you know? You never know. And not every song needs to move people in a live setting like that. You know, sometimes songs make you cry. It doesn't have to move you around. But when you see people moving and maybe crying and moving, when you know that they're feeling something that you felt, nothing feels more amazing because it just shows how you're inexplicably bonded with the people that listen to your music. To me, a performance is you just performing music. It doesn't have to be to a lot of people. It could be just to your cat. It could be to anyone and to no one. Essentially, you're just performing music. And so there is a, a beautiful quality to an intimate performance where it is just you and a few people or just you by yourself. You know, you get to feel all your own feelings and it's less about what other people think, you know? But at the same time, when you're performing for a lot of people, that's a whole other amazing, beautiful shared experience that you're having with a large group of people. So it can go either way. There is this introspective music maker uh, that's quiet and sensitive. And there's this part of me that loves making friends with people and talking with people and socializing and sharing, sharing music. And once you're performing, you're in that headspace that you were in when you were a kid discovering music. 
And again, I only make music because I love music. And when I'm performing, I get to be in the space of sharing again, sharing with everyone. So it's pretty exciting. Full circle.